Oh, I think we're live. Hi, everyone. Uh, you're watching Earth Sky, and I'm Deborah Bird with more breaking news. For the first time, astronomers have obtained an image of a supernova that exploded twice. You see the remains of the star behind me here. This supernova remnant is called SR 0509 minus 67.5. Priam Das is a PhD student working and studying at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia. He is first author on the new research on the double detonation supernova. And he told me that because they're studying dead stars, it's a bit like solving a crime. Fascinated, like basically we're kind of doing forensic science on these things like forensic astrophysics, like these are basically dead stars and we're trying to understand what caused the death. Okay, our, our platform is cutting things off a little at the end, but they're trying to understand what caused the death of the star that exploded as a supernova. And this work was published just today in Nature Astronomy. The link is in the program description. Priam worked with Ivo Seitzenzal, now at the Mathematical Sciences Institute of the Australian National Observatory, and both of them spoke to me on Monday. Now here's Ivo Seitzenzal talking about the progenitor star, the star that existed before the explosion. This is a supernova remnant 0509 minus 67.5. Or 509 in short. Yeah, so these are stars that are about the size of Mars and they'll have masses uh, around the, the mass of the sun. And because they're so small, um, they will have densities where, you know, one cubic centimeter, like a sugar cube, uh, would weigh between 10 million to a billion grams. So extremely dense stars, um, very compact. Extremely dense stars, very compact. This orange illustration behind me is our sun, and the little white object to the right uh, is all of our sun's mass squashed down into a white dwarf. So uh, white dwarfs are really small and compact. Uh, the white dwarf supernova or type one supernova studied by Priam and Evo is rare. It's more rare than the core collapse supernovae that we typically think of when we think of exploding stars. Those other sorts of explosions stem from a different kind of star. Scientists that study type 1a supernovae are still grappling with what makes white dwarf stars explode. Here's Evo Seitzenzal again, talking about some of the biggest mysteries. It turns out that it's actually very difficult uh, in nature to create stellar systems where the accretion happens in such a way that the primary more massive white dwarf grows in mass approaching the Chandrasekhar limit. We don't make enough of them. It, it probably can be done, but very rarely, it's very hard to, 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 ha to have that. And so, you know, the, there was a paradigm shift then um, uh, in, you know, recent years towards lower mass white dwarfs exploding. But then you have the question, how do you ignite it? A, a white dwarf around with a mass of a solar like uh, with the mass of the sun, the solar mass, it's usually inert. It doesn't just blow up. So how do we how do we get this white dwarf to blow up? Well, one way, and this is the double detonation, one way is for this star to accrete helium. Let's say it's merging with another helium-rich white dwarf, and in the merger process, helium piles on the surface of the solar mass white dwarf. So the helium detonates in one detonation, basically um, detonating and, and burning the surface material. And that burning uh, triggers a detonation in the core. And so the second detonation now blows up the whole star. So there's these two detonations, one in the helium layer and one in the carbon oxygen core. And that's why we uh, say they're, you know, the double detonation mechanism. 
So they thought there was a double detonation, but until now there'd been no clear visual evidence of it, no signature as astronomers say. But recently astronomers predicted that this process should create a distinctive pattern or fingerprint or signature in the supernova's still glowing remains, the remnant that stays visible long after the initial explosion. Research uh, suggests that the remnants of such a supernova would contain two shells uh, of calcium, and that's what we're seeing here. Here's Evo again. So people people had known about it and, and made predictions and tested their theories in a little bit more, I would say, indirect ways. And so what we've done for the first time, we basically created an image that has, you know, shows the two shells. It shows the it shows the two two deton the products of the two detonations. It shows calcium in an outer shell from the helium detonation and then another inner calcium uh um uh, from the from the core detonation. So this work is confirmation of astronomers' idea about how and why white dwarf stars sometimes explode as supernovae. Priam also had this to say about why he loved doing the work that led to this beautiful image. Humans have always fascinated uh, human human right. Like we see the crab nebula, we see the the other nebulas, and they're like so amazing so uh i love the image because it's like so spherical it's so symmetric and other thing is like it's the first direct uh imaging of the imprint of the explosion itself and so like i would i would expect that this would uh motivate other researchers to love this uh field and to look at these wonderful objects in the sky like when you put them in different colors and stuff And this work has cosmological implications too. Type 1a supernovae are one key to our understanding of our larger universe and what happens to it over time. These supernovae behave in very consistent ways and their predictable brightnesses, no matter how far away they are, help astronomers to measure distances in space. So astronomers use type 1a supernovae exploding white dwarfs as a cosmic measuring tape. Doing this, a team of astronomers a few years ago discovered the accelerating expansion of the universe, a discovery that led to a 2011 Nobel Prize. And so this study is important for that reason too. But that's not all. I asked Evo what else he finds fascinating about exploding stars. That's an interesting question, Deborah. Um, type 1a supernovae in particular, they, they are the sites where a lot of the iron peak elements are made. Right? Elements don't just always exist. They haven't always existed. The Big Bang made hydrogen and helium, a bit of lithium, and that's it. Where do all the other elements come from? Well, you know, <clears throat> you have stars and they burn hydrogen and helium and they make carbon and oxygen. Uh, <clears throat> but where does the iron come from in our blood? Where does the manganese come from and the chromium for the steel and the nickel? The majority of those elements, they come from thermonuclear supernova explosions, type 1a supernovae. And they were made before the Earth was formed. So there were supernova explosions somewhere in our galaxy that created these heavy elements and they traveled the pre-solar nebula mixed with the pre-solar nebula, the sun formed, the earth formed, and all these elements now that are iron and manganese, you know, that are in the, in the laptop, in the computer, in the iPad, right? They come from, from these supernovae. And what we've done now, um, we've, We've, we see them being created, or just after they were created, in a type 1a supernova. We see the calcium, we see the iron, we see the sulfur, and uh, this is where, where this work is special. 
And it is special. I want to thank Evo Seitzenswall and Priyam Das for speaking with me. And I want to thank others at Earth Sky, Natalia Navo, Will Triggs, Marcy Curran, and Jeremiah Guajardo for helping me put today's show together. We're here live every weekday around midday in North America. Thank you for watching. One Earth, One Sky, Earth Sky.